presentation of Dialogue on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family's legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Coming up, she's got a front row seat in the halls of power, but she often trades it for a back row seat in a Humvee. A conversation with ABC News Chief White House Correspondent Martha Raddatz, next on Dialogue. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Marcia Franklin. A welcome as well to those of you listening on public radio and the World Wide Web. There's a common criticism of Washington politicians, lobbyists, and reporters that they suffer from Potomac fever, only looking at issues through the myopic lens of the nation's capital. My guest today, to be sure, spends a lot of time inside the Beltway, the main route around Washington, but she also travels Route Delta and Route Irish, known as the Highway of Death in Baghdad. Martha Raddatz has been the chief White House correspondent for ABC News since 2005. She's been with that network since 1999. Prior to that, for six years, she covered the Pentagon for National Public Radio, and public television viewers will recognize her as well for her regular appearances on Washington Week with Gwen Ifill. Ms. Raddatz started her career at ABC as their State Department correspondent and then became the senior national security correspondent in 2003. That's when she started going to Iraq, and she hasn't stopped going a total of 17 times now. The recipient of numerous honors, including a Peabody Award and three Emmy Awards, Ms. Raddatz is also an author. Her interest in Iraq and her knowledge of military affairs resulted in her book, The Long Road Home, about a battle in Sadr City, Iraq, and its effect not only on the soldiers involved, but also their families. She's in Boise as the distinguished speaker at the annual Idaho Humanities Council lecture, and we thank that organization and Ms. Raddatz for making time in her schedule to be here. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be in Idaho. And one note, because this is a taped program, there will be no call-ins. It is kind of like old home. It's literally old home because I was born in Idaho <laughs> Falls. I didn't spend very long here. I was three years old and then moved, but this is my birthplace. Is it true that you interviewed for a, a job uh, <laughs> as a TV reporter here in Boise and was yes. turned down? Yes, yes. <laughs> Do we dare it say is. where? <laughs> you know what? This is terrible. I don't remember. Uh -huh. It might have been the ABC. I, I don't know. I mean, came up and I know somewhere in somebody's vault there's an on air tryout for me with, <laughs> with whatever station that was. Well, but it I worked out. Up. It worked out just fine. It you worked, worked out. out you ended fine. up in Boston. Yes, in Boston and, and then uh, in Washington, D.C. Well, it's fabulous to have and you. And I probably wasn't any good, so, you know. <laughs> well, I doubt that. There's probably a news director with some chagrin right now. Um, I want to talk to you, of course, we want to talk about Iraq, but I want to start by talking about uh, your work at the White House. Uh, as we approach the end of uh, President Bush's term, and, and this interview will air after the election, what's it like? Is much going on, or, or is pretty quiet? <laughs> it's pretty quiet. I'll tell you a story. My... Um, my mother, because I, you know, I've been on the air practically every day since September 11th. In the last four or five months, because of the elections and because I'm covering President Bush, I really haven't been on nearly as much. And my mother called me up and she said, "Martha, tell me the truth. You've been fired." <laughs> <laughs> So we, I said, no, really, Mom, I work every day. I go to, you know, I go to the briefings. I, I follow right. President Bush around, but the interest level has, has been so low. I mean, together with his disapproval ratings right. and the fact that, that he's a lame duck, um, we, really haven't, we really haven't gotten him on the air much. I assume that you will still re report from the White House after the election that the, the tr transition must be one of the most fascinating things to watch. Uh, the transition is, is fascinating, and after the election, I think I will. After that, I think it's traditional that people who cover the campaign take over the White House, which is just fine with is me. Is that right? Yes. And will you continue in foreign affairs? And I, yes. Okay. I, I, That's uh, your foreign affairs and, and national security things. And I mean, I, uh, one of the reasons that this covering this president worked out so well for me is because of my background in national security and foreign affairs and because this was a president where all the focus is on foreign affairs and the war in Iraq. So I, I, I would have gone crazy if I'd had to stay in the White House every day. I'm not that kind of reporter, just like you said. I have Potomac fever, but it means I got to get out of there. Uh, well, let's, uh, uh, before we talk about Iraq, let's talk about covering the Bush and Cheney White House. What has it been like 
comparatively? I mean, I know you weren't White House correspondent, but as uh, covering the Pentagon, you, you were in the Clinton administration. Has it been a secret, as everybody has said? I, I would say it is, it, is, it has been a secret, as everyone says. I mean, it is very, very hard to penetrate that White House. It is very hard to get anybody to talk or get context from the White House. My advantage, if, it, if, if I can say that, was that I had been covering Washington for so long, and particularly in the national security, that I could have sources outside yeah. of the White House. Yeah. And, and I call them the sort of the permanent government. The, the, I can talk to the military, people who've been there for years, people who trust me, and, and really it's the only way that I could break any stories outside of because the White House is pretty impenetrable. And you do, you know, you, you talk about this bubble. People talk about the bubble that President Bush is in. And, and to me, I had to get out. I mean, the press is too. You know, you travel with him, and you don't really see where you're going or, or, or how what he does affects people. And that's, to me, why I really just stomped my foot and said, I'm getting out of this building. Well, let's talk about that. Let's uh, look at some of the footage of you in Iraq. Um, you made it a priority. You've made it a priority to go there. And you've said it's not because you're a war junkie. But it's just that it's very intellectually stimulating to go see what is happening there. And, and necessary. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, I don't think you can be an effective reporter or an honest reporter in a way if you really haven't seen those things you're talking about. Listen, I'm one of those people, and I can watch TV at night and, and hear people talking about Iraq or Pakistan, who I know have never been there, who I know have not really delved into those subjects, and it drives me crazy. Now, I, so I, I just had to get out there. I had to get out there, and I had to keep going. And it was a little controversial at first with ABC, because it's like, you look, you're the White House reporter. I said, I know, I know, I know, and I am the White House reporter, but it, make, it helps me ask better questions. It helps me. I mean, there, we're, we're looking right there in a, in a faint into Fallujah in the middle of the night. I mean, I could talk about Fallujah. I could ask the president specific questions about what I'd seen. If, if it was different than what they were talking about, I could come back and, at them. And how often is it different? Oh, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think in the, last, in the last interview I did with the president in Crawford, I asked him about the fact that in 2006 it was so clearly not working. That strategy was so clearly not working. But you know, they said, we're winning, we're going to win. And the last interview I did with him, I said, did you really think that at the time? And he said, well, I, I knew the strategy wasn't working. I knew it wasn't working, which is quite, quite a thing to admit. When you go, um, do you tell your family? Obviously, they're going to see you on television, so they're going to know that you're there eventually. But do you sometimes just leave and not want to worry them? Yes, <laughs> and it's a, it, it only works for so long. Um, I, I, there's a great story going on patrol with the Marines once, and we there was a rocket attack. There were a couple of rockets that hit nearby us, and mortar attacks across. And the guy says, "You know, if I were you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell your your husband." I said, "Here's the thing, guys. It's going to be on television tonight. He's going to know." But I, 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 my husband covered wars as well. Tom Jelton. Tom Jelton from NPR, and. He knows I don't like to talk about it. He knows I don't like to talk about where I'm going. Or, or you know, I have this thing that even if people say, be careful, don't worry, you know, we're worried about you, it, it just gets me in the wrong frame of mind because you really have to go over there and be focused. And, and be focused. And I, I think the word fearless is a bad word. If you're fearless, you're, you're crazy. I think you have to have a healthy sense of what you're doing. But, but you also have to focus on your, on your job, not on your concerns. And I like uh, what you said about your children, and that is that you want them to see their mother loving what she does so that they can have the idea that they can pick something like that, too. And I'm sure they'll pay me back. My son, my son plays football, and I watch that like that as well. Um, and I, I want... I raised my children. My daughter's 27, is a third-year law student, and my son is a junior in high school. And I have raised them to, to find what it is that they are passionate about. And I think that's important, and to be independent. I feel bad that my children have to worry about me, but they also know that what I do is important to me and that I hope is important to the country. And I don't want to make that bigger than it sounds, but it's important to me that people understand what's happening over there, to understand, because we as a country have not sacrificed. We just have not sacrificed in this war. 